Hi, my name's Tom. Welcome to my series on fourth tuning, EADGCF tuning for the guitar. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the pentatonic um, scale and we're going to be talking about the shapes that we can use on the fretboard. Next lesson, we're going to be specifically talking about licks, um, some that we already know and some new ones that open up with the tuning, but for this lesson, we're just going to be talking about shapes. So, the pentatonic shape that most people know and that most people rely on um, looks like this on the guitar. So we're going to do all these examples in the key of A minor. Uh, a minor pentatonic is, is fairly common. So for the most part, the scale is exactly the same on the fretboard. It's only when we get to the top two strings that it changes. So we would normally play, uh, starting on the low E, fifth to eighth fret. <laughs> Then on the A, 5th to 7th, and again 5th to 7th on the D, and again on the G. And then normally we would play 5th fret to the 8th on the B, and 5th fret to the 8th on the E. Only in this tuning, that would send us out of the key. So as usual, we need to apply the formula that we've been using all along to transfer things that we already know in standard tuning to this tuning. And that's any time we play anything on the top two strings, we just move it down one fret. So instead of it being the normal shape, it would look like this. So we actually move down one fret to accommodate the new tuning where we play fourth fret, seventh, fourth fret, seventh. Now initially this shape presents some disadvantages, but the advantage with the tuning is it makes the pentatonic scale easier to visualize on the neck in total, but I'll just explain what I mean by that. The advantage to our original shape in standard tuning is that our first finger is constantly anchored on the fifth fret, so, and then in standard tuning. So we never have to shift our hand, um, our first fret's always going back to those, uh, sorry, our first finger's always going back to those fifth fret notes if we're in the key of A. Now in this tuning, it was a little bit impractical to do that shape because that jump there, while totally playable, is, is not as comfortable and as familiar as the uh, position we were using in the last tuning, but that's not a problem because we only used that shape because it was there anyway, and there are plenty more ways to play it, and the, the advantage with this new tuning is, again like I mentioned so many times in these videos, that the, the neck becomes symmetrical. So really we only need to learn this one shape and so long as we understand what's going on here in terms of where the notes lie, we can move it around and we don't need to learn like the six or seven pentatonic shapes, we just need to learn the one and then just apply a bit of logic to it really. Now when I've been uh, improvising using the pentatonic uh, scale, which I do a lot, um, I haven't been sticking in this traditional shape. <laughs> I've been taking advantage of the symmetrical nature of the tuning. So what I would do is um, I would take scale fragments, which I'll be talking about in a few few lessons time uh, in regards to like the major scale and stuff. But I would take like the pentatonic scale fragments and just move them around. So if we just take one octave of the pentatonic, starting on the low string, so fifth to eighth, fifth to seventh, fifth to seventh again. Now we're at the home note there, we're back at the A on that seventh fret on the D. So all we need to do is restart that pattern again, starting on that root note. And the advantage is where we would have had to have moved when we got up to the B string to accommodate that third in the tuning, we don't have to do that anymore. So the, shape, the scale would look like this, and I'm gonna double up the octave note so you can see me restarting the pattern. So, then restart. Then restart again. Now we don't have a, an extra high uh, A sharp string, so we would have to go to finish off. But so we're just recycling that shape, and then to finish it off which is really useful because it means that we don't have to think about the pentatonic scale in terms of a six string shape. We just need to think of it in, in its bare bones, the one octave of it, and then we can just move it around. And again, the advantage of this tuning is it's not like we've got to think of another position when we start on the A string, because if we do the exact same pattern, on the 
A string, it just worked perfectly because we've got, not got to make concessions for this tuning. This was the hardest thing for me to get my head around because I was so used to having basically two shapes of everything, one with a root on the E, one with a root on the A, because of the accommodations and concessions we had to make for this tuning, we no, no longer have that problem. So we can go... <laughs> and it's all exactly the same pattern. Now there's one more shape that I'm gonna show you that I find even easier, and it means that we, we completely ignore this, because um, the pentatonic that we were using before, we were either doing a tone gap, so like, which are all two frets apart, so a tone, um, or a minor third gap, like at the bottom and at the top. Now, there's nothing wrong with those stretches, but to get, um, a certain amount of fluidity going, I like to try and keep the uh, distance between the notes as similar as possible. So what we can do is we can play the pentatonic scale just with whole tone gaps. Now let me explain that slowly. So instead of starting with our first finger um, on the low E, we're going to be starting with our ring finger, or our little finger, but I would suggest the ring finger. We're going to play that fifth fret, and we're going to, instead of hitting this note, we're going to move that onto the A string, and play the third fret, and then we're going to hit the fifth fret on the um, A with our ring finger again, sliding it up to the seventh fret, then fifth fret on the D, and then seventh fret. Now we're, we're not playing two notes per string anymore, and we weren't with the other position I showed. So any of your looks that are. Uh, might not be accommodated in this new tuning exactly, but I like to use as many notes per string as possible before moving on. So um, we've got this shape, which is 5th fret on the low E, 3rd on the A, 5th on the A, 7th on the A, 5th on the D, and 7th on the D. So that slowly is... And this shape, because obviously that's our starting note again, means that we can play... everything we've moved is all in tone gaps so it means we can do things like licks like that that I'll talk about in the next video that use the exact same shape moving up, which I find really useful. So, um, just to explain further about what I talked about earlier, about our shape not having to, um, we, us not having to learn shapes for each thing, we basically need to think logically about this. So whenever we've got a root note, we know that we can begin the pattern, our very, very first pattern that we learned in standard tuning, as if we were playing on the E. So let's say if we're in the key of A, and we find an a, a, a note, we know that the original scale went and that will still work wherever we are in the neck as long as we've got an A. So let's say if we start here and then we need to know that when we are because that we're hitting the fourth there, the highest note we're hitting, whenever we're starting from the uh, root note going down then we use this pattern. which is exactly the same as we would have done with with this shape if we were in standard tuning, but we need to make ourselves aware that the, the we're not always going to be anchoring with our first finger. So if you get this shape into your head, the first one we, that we talked about, and really think about what's going on in terms of intervals and where the home notes are. <laughs> build a pentatonic scale from it. Or, we can do, uh, excuse me, build our, these fragment shapes that I talked about um, second off. And these are the ones that I prefer to use, rather than thinking in terms of full six string patterns, which can be very, fairly confusing and it's a lot to remember. Um, it's better to think of um, these things in fragments and build it up from there. And that's something I'm going to talk about two videos from now in the uh, lesson on scale fragments and on how to visualize the neck that way. Um, in the next lesson I'm going to be talking about um, pentatonic licks that we already know and some pentatonic licks that open up in this new tuning um, 
and how to get around them with the with the new fourth tuning. So hopefully if you've enjoyed this lesson, you can stay tuned for that one, which should be next week. Um, and if this lesson's been useful, then please let me know. I've got some more planned. And, and hopefully after a few more of these, the transition from standard tuning to fourth tuning might be a bit easier. And with this instructional stuff, you, you might be able to, uh, to incorporate it into your playing a lot more efficiently. Thanks ever so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.